Hello, everybody. Welcome to this workshop. We're going to be digging into how to scale your product-led business. I'm so excited. I'm going to share my screen and we're just going to kick it right off into how to scale your product-led business. So first part, goal today, as I mentioned, is help you understand what is the exact bottleneck that is holding you back from scaling your product-led business. So write this down because I'm going to check in the recap section that you actually understand what this bottleneck is in your business. Because if you're going to scale, you need to crush bottlenecks and this is going to be the fastest way to do it. Where are you on your journey? We're all in the now. All right. And over here we have this fancy future. Living in the future. Let's call this three years from now. All right. So we got those two things and there's this nice big old line. And so when we look at this, where are you right now as it relates to your product led journey? And so some of you are I'm on this line. Maybe you started building your product led business and you didn't quite know exactly what you were doing. And then you launched the model. The model's not working. People aren't converting and you kind of go down, you start focusing more on your offer. Maybe you start focusing on your onboarding. It doesn't keep working and you just kind of go down this spiral. So obviously in three years, <laughs> this is what we want to avoid. And so this, a lot of it comes down to really uh, it's unfocused. So that's, that's one of the big things. If you're in this camp, what you're typically going to notice is it's a low, like free to paid conversion rate. As far as your go to market motion, you might flop from sales led to product led. It's the flavor of the week, flavor of the month, um, because it, it just doesn't seem to work. The second piece here, this is really, really common where you might start off with launching your product led model, or maybe you already are product led. And then you start doing some things and then it, it's like, oh, nothing seems to kind of hit home. Oh, we have another great innovative idea. It's kind of short term, it doesn't really work. And then it kind of goes downhill again. And then you're, you're kind of going up and again, and this is a scary place to be and it's the plateau. And so if you're in this as a business, it's really scary to be in a plateau because you're thinking to yourself like, uh, what are we doing? And this is really when it comes down to like, you just don't know and what you're doing and you're not focusing on the right levers for your business and you're not doing things in the right order as you'll kind of learn today and where i want you to be in three years from now it's going to be like this you find initial success with your product led model you build your growth blueprint you get crystal clear on your strategy your vision your user you know exactly who that user is you master your product led model you build that product that sells itself you build the team around it you build the processes to get you to that scale and that's really where we want to be is the scale part and so the biggest thing that's going to help us get there to where we want to go on the right trajectory is really it comes down to leadership and what I'm going to share with you is that framework that will help it make it so much easier for you to scale your business. But before we can go to the framework, there's three things you need to know before you can scale. The very first one is, is a fun one. So synergy is a precursor to scale. So whenever it comes to synergy and what do I mean by synergy, uh, I'll share an example that we'll all understand. So in math, we're taught two plus one equals three, right? Right. Pretty straightforward. Now with synergy, two plus one can equal a hundred. And now I'm no mathematician, but I will share with you how this uh, obviously doesn't make sense right now, but how it is true. So the very first thing is when we look at scale, that's what we're after. We want to scale this product led motion. We need three things to actually achieve scale. And when they work together, it provides this incredible exponential growth for our business. Uh, but if we don't have them, or if we just have one, we're not going to get that synergy. And so what it looks like for to achieve this scale, we need three things. Uh, the first one's kind of obvious when you think about it, as far as running a business is you need a profitable business. So that's like, all right, no brainer, duh. You need profit to scale your business, all right? And so the second part of this that it might not be as obvious is as it relates to your product, you must have empowering product. 
So that's the second thing. You got to have that part. And then when it relates to the third, the third part of synergy and unlocking scale really comes down to getting what I like to call effortless customers. So if you get these three right, everything else seems to get easier. And so this is really the very like precursor how you can get that synergy working for your business. Effortless customers, it's not so much like it's going to be completely effortless to serve these customers initially. But over time, as you get better and better at honing in on who are those right users, how you can self-serve and help them see success over time, it does actually become a lot more effortless. And the goal is this is on both ends, effortless for you as a business to serve them, effortless for them to get value from your products. It's a two way street. And so everything here is is connected. The second, this one shouldn't be a surprise for uh, anybody who's gone through our programs, but how you sell is just as important as what you sell. So this is kind of the, the age old part of like, if I compare and contrast two different business types, there is your sales led business. How do you make money? It really comes down to like the fundamentals of three things. One, you still got our choir. You still got to get people to your website, fill out a demo request, all that stuff. And then there's this third step, which I like to call the monetize step. You won't have to obviously make money as a business and uh, make that work. And then it's about the engage. Engage basically means get them to value, um, help them see what your products can actually do and deliver on that promise that you promised over here. So that's kind of the difference here. Uh, is you gotta understand that. But the really big thing is when you're building a product-led business, the thing your entire team needs to understand is there's one big shift that happens. All right, so acquire, you still gotta get people, unfortunately, to your website to find out what you do to get those signups. Here is the big transition is it's about engage first, and then it's all about monetize um, and growing customer value. So that's like the big shift here. And this is so subtle and it seems like a small thing, but it changes everything as far as how you go to market, how you serve people and everything else. And also changes uh, what I like to call the secret of how to build your business. And so uh, if you've been a part of our programs as well, it's, it's this is your users will eventually become your success. All right, so the last thing I'll talk about that you need to know before you can scale is there is a strategic order to scale. So whenever you're thinking about um, how do I scale, I like to think about it as much like you would build a house where it's like, okay, you always have to start with that foundation. And so whenever it comes to building that product-led business can actually scale, um, the very first thing is what I like to call the blueprint. The growth blueprint really looks at like, what is your vision as a business? So if you analyze like the top product led businesses of what you'll often realize is like, actually their vision statement is like helping anybody design anything better or something like that. As an example, it's trying to make your product accessible. It's connecting to the product as well as what you do as a business. So your vision is super important, but then your strategy. So that's super important as well. So who are you targeting? Are you targeting users or are you targeting buyers? And a lot of times I find companies will just go to the next step, which is like building a product that sells itself, but they haven't actually changed their strategy. Um, they are still targeting buyers. They're not kind of prioritizing users. And so that's, that's a big shift you need to make as well as a business is. And then there's your user. So are you crystal clear on who your user is how you can serve them best, what are their like main jobs to be done and where did they get stuck when it relates to using your product? And then the last part of building your blueprint is the model. And so what is it that you're gonna give away for free? And this is all dependent on who is your user? What are their big challenges that they, they have? And what could you potentially give away for free that will help them level up to the next level? So the blueprint, if you skip that step, the next one becomes way harder. And this is the growth engine. And so in the growth engine is really consists of how do you build that product that sells itself? And so to do that, there's three things you need to get right. There's your offer, which is like, okay, 
our homepage is presenting like, what is our free offer? It's easy for people to understand what the heck we do. And then there's your experience to actually getting to value. And so that's really, really important, obviously, uh, as it relates to this part here, because as we know, having signed up for a lot of different apps, if you don't get this part right, you won't get a chance at this part, which is all about the monetization part because people will just leave and they won't come back. And so the building the growth engine is definitely the second step of this process. But then we finally get to the exponential growth part. And this is really when we start to look a lot more at the data and we start to build a growth process around, okay, how do we consistently launch more and more experiments to improve the growth engine. And then eventually we start to realize, actually we need to hire A players for each area of our growth engine. And so there is a very strategic order to scale. Start with the circle. There we got a nice big one. And then we got the second circle here. Yay. And everybody, feel free to make fun of my writing. I am not a writer. So scale is at the core of this. And when it comes to creating that synergy, it's still the same components. So we still have here, profitable company, still gotta have that. And then over here, it's the empowering product is the next step. And then over here, this is really just looking at how do we create those effortless customers? How do we actually do it? How do we make this work for our specific business? So when it comes to making that work how do we get a profitable company an empowering product you can't target everybody that's the sad reality and actually engage your users and provide that incredible value so that's the kind of the secret here is on this side for engage it's really about okay we got to create that empowering product and create effortless customers the easiest way to do that is actually start with the, the acquisition who are the right users? If we take, let's say, for instance, a very technical product and we give it to somebody who's not technical, their odds of success are so low. So we <laughs> got to start here with acquiring the right users and then we can start to worry about engaging um, and creating that incredible value. So the last part of this is really about monetize. Everything here is a two-way street. So yes, it's about making money as a business, but it's also about the customer. And so how do we grow customer value? That is the kind of overarching goal here. So when it comes to understanding and unpacking, like where is your bottleneck in the business? This is where it gets really, really fun. If you were to focus on one area, where would that be for your business? And so I'm gonna go through the first part of this, the acquisition side. And the very first part is all kind of ties back the phase one. Phase one was all about blueprint. So what does that look like for your business? And so we got to get really crystal clear on what is our vision for the business? It's your, your vision, your mission for the business. Uh, where is your business headed? And then as it relates to your strategy, it's really answering like five key questions. It's like, what is your winning aspiration as a business? Are you really clear? on where you're going to play as a business. And then do you have a very compelling way of how you can win as a business? Or are you just simply playing to play as it relates to, to running your business? And the other parts is like, what are the capabilities you need to have as a business in order to win? And what are some of those management systems that you need to also make sure that this happens? And the next part is your user. So is your company incredibly clear on who your user is. Are you really understanding like what is the main job to be done for this user? Do you know exactly who this user is? Do you know like what they their biggest challenges are as it relates to getting value in your product? Do you understand where they get stuck? Do you understand what they feel whenever they see success? What they uh, what are some of those like functional uh, jobs to be done that they're trying to get done in your product? Do you understand that user or is it kind of vague? Um, as it relates to that. And so the third component of really building your blueprint all comes down to your model. So as it relates to your product-led model, I want you to think about what that looks like for your business. 
Um, if you have a really great product led model, you'll notice that even if you have like okay onboarding or anything like that, you will still have a high free to pay conversion rate because people are easily able to get the value they need. And a lot of times I find companies obsessing about their onboarding when they have a very bad model. And it's so frustrating to see. This is why I wanted to do this workshop because it's like, hey, if you know you don't have this right, don't obsess about your onboarding. <laughs> Focus here. This is the highest leverage part of it. This is your growth engine. And the kind of core outcome of this is to build a product that sells itself. And so in order to do that, boil it down to its simplest terms, there's three things you need. So the very first one is you need a really clear offer. So what the heck is it that you give away as a business? How do you help people? What is your promise? Is it really, really clear? Like, what is that for your specific business? The second part of this is I've been talking about onboarding, but I'm just going to define it as experiences. It's a little more general, but captures everything. So when it comes to creating the effortless customers, this is really where this comes in. And we're thinking about how do we create that effortless experience for our users? How do we make it effortless? to sign up for our product? How do we make it effortless to get to value? How do we make it effortless to eventually upgrade and go through that? So experience is so critical. Pricing is the third part of building your growth engine. So we got to have obviously pricing. If you this is the first time you're like, oh, we're making this big shift from sales on a product led. Yes, <laughs> you do eventually need to have public pricing and make it easy for people to understand. It's like, how are you going to charge? What does that look like? Um, and the kind of like golden standard here is people need to understand within like five seconds, like what is the price of the product? Which plan is best for me? So we got the last part, phase three of the framework. So this is all about exponential growth. So phase three, first thing is you need data. So now that you have the growth engine, you can get really, really, really specific around, okay, where are people dropping off in that growth engine? And um, who are the best customers? Once again, feeding that data into over here with who's our ideal user and actually improving the overall system. So the next part is what I like to call process. So what I mean by process, I'm not exactly referring to what we all know is like those fun standard operating procedures. Uh, what I'm talking about here is more of your growth process. So now that you have the right data, do you have the right experimentation process? Do you know, um, and kind of like staggering your experiments as far as what could have the biggest impact, where do you invest your time and team's time in really seeing where are those big levers of growth for your business? and everything's tied to the, the data, the core, maybe one to three kind of metrics you're trying to really, really move the needle on because you know it's the highest leverage opportunity. And so everything's geared towards that and you're focusing on those highest leverage opportunities. So the last part of all of this, it really comes down to your team. So uh, this is really the best time to really look at, okay, we know, for instance, exactly what are the metrics that are gonna have the highest leverage in our business. And we know, okay, these are like maybe a, there's a great backlog of experiments that maybe might help us engage users better, might really help improve our growth engine. Um, but now we know it's like, maybe we need to hire a growth product manager. Maybe it's somebody who can actually, maybe we're missing some things here on the data side. If we had the right data, you'd make better decisions. Maybe it's hiring that data engineer. Maybe it's looking at, okay, our marketing is okay. Like we're targeting the right people, but if we had 10X, through the system, if we tax the number of signups, we could also just exponentially grow this business. And so it's really looking at, okay, do we have the right people on the team to actually win and deliver on our vision and strategy? I hope you found this model helpful. This is referred to as if you want to Google it or look it up. This is something that we have focused on a lot. It's called the product led method. And this is something that is going to really help you scale your product and business way faster because you're going to have like the 20,000 foot view of where to really focus in your business. If you follow the product and method, this is my goal for you. It's really just to get you on that scale path faster so you can grow higher growth and be less unfocused and also know what you're doing. So you can basically do the same thing in half the time. And these three things matter. When it comes to creating that synergy, everything starts with three things, building a profitable company, 
building an empowering product and creating those effortless customers because everything that we talked about builds off of that. That is the foundation of how you build product at scale and how you actually make that happen is really by focusing on how you sell is just as important as what you sell. And the big shift you need to make as an entire business is prioritizing engagement before monetization. And there is, yes, a strategic order. I'm so happy a lot of you loved that part of like, there is actually an order to this. Hope you have an amazing day and cheers.